Hello everyone. I'll give it a moment and then we'll get started. If you're watching this later, thank you for watching. We'll just see if anybody pops on. I know it's Friday afternoon. I'm impatient. I like to get started. Oh, hang on, I can't get started because I forgot the main component of today. Oh, there's people here now. Look at that. Hello, everyone. All right, so. I'm trying something different. I'm gonna try Friday afternoon lives. I know it's not ideal for everyone, um, but my Saturday is pretty much until Christmas. I have got a full day here in the store and then I've got something in the afternoon, whether it be a class um, or a paint and sip, or there's just something on every Saturday. Um, so I'm gonna try Friday afternoons. Friday afternoons I'm pretty easy going. My husband doesn't work Friday afternoons so I don't have to do school pickup which means I get the Friday afternoons here in the store to myself. So we're gonna try Fridays and see how we go. So this week I have got three projects on the go and I'm really trying to get them done a little bit faster than what I normally do. Normally it's quite common for me to take up to a month to get a piece done, but three pieces at a time and I really want to get them all done quite quickly and I'm enjoying doing them all as well which makes a big difference <coughs> I've been sanding and my throat is killing me this week all right so today we're going to do some chalk finish pure eco chalk finish uh, we're using chalk finish because it's what I've got open already <coughs> I knew the minute I started I would start choking um, the dust really irritates my throat at the moment. So we're using chalk finish simply because it's what I've got open. Uh, we're using the color carbon, which is the black. We could be, we could absolutely use silk finish. What I'm doing here today, you do it exactly the same with silk finish, but we're using chalk because as I said, it's what I've got open. We're going to be doing a dresser. So, but because it's large flat surfaces, we're going to roll it, which I don't think I've shown in a live before. So we're going to use a Too Fussy Bloats roller. So this is the roller handle from their kit. So their kit comes with the roller handle and two roller heads. Um, I normally try and plan lives around what I've got in stock as well, so that if you guys see something you like, you can jump straight on a bike. Unfortunately, the last one of these sold out last night. So. I will order more. I haven't had a chance today, but I'll order more tomorrow, so they'll be here next week. But if you want one, let me know. But the roller heads, which are these ones here, this is the ones that I sell. Um, I think, oh no, maybe I don't anymore. I did have some on clearance, but I, oh, I did have some on clearance, but I think they're all gone. So we're using the five mil nap. They come in a 10 pack and a five pack. These fit any standard small roller handle. Um, so they're not very big as you can see. Just a small roller handle. It's like the size of my hand. They fit any standard roller. You do not have to have the kit and this handle if you don't want to. You can use any you like. But I do highly, highly, highly recommend the actual roller heads. They give a really, really beautiful finish. Um, I used to roll a lot of furniture and then the rollers that I was using, they change and I don't know what changed about them, but they just weren't as good. I wasn't getting as nice a finish as what I used to get. So I stopped rolling furniture. Uh, Two Fussy Blokes contacted me last year or possibly the year before, might've been the year before, about potentially stocking the rollers. So I told them to send me some and I'll give them a go. And since then, I've been rolling pretty much every piece lately has had at least one element of it rolled. Um, I do prefer rolling furniture over brushing when I can, simply because it's a lot quicker. 
You can also spray furniture if you like. I don't, it's too messy, it's too time consuming for me and I find I'm not really saving time. I also like getting hands on with a piece. Uh, so for me, I find spraying is just too production line for me. It's not something that I enjoy. Yes, the finish is amazing, but it's not for me. I've tried it, done it, don't like it. So rolling and brushing is what we're doing today. So this dresser, now I am gonna have to move the camera a couple of times today because um, this dress is ginormous. It's like 1.2 wide, I think. So here's our dresser and so there we go. Two small drawers at the top, two big drawers down the bottom. So we're going to be rolling the drawer fronts Oh, we're going to be rolling, or painting rather, these two panels. The timber, it's an oak dresser. It is beautiful timber. It stands up really well. It's thick and it's chunky and it's just gorgeous. So I really, really like the timber. So the timber has just been sanded completely and then cleaned really well. I did bleach the top, just one coat of bleach. It still had a lot of red coming through it. Um, you can see a little bit on the legs, but the top, was quite significant on how much red was coming through. So I did do one coat of bleach. Um, if you'd like a video on the bleach, I can show you all. So just let me know. Um, I haven't done one yet, but I'm sure I'll have another piece shortly that I want to do. Pretty much the bleach just takes the color out. So I've got rid of the red for me. And then we're gonna do the carbon in the panels and on the drawers. And then I will make a decision about the actual timber. I'm thinking I might just hemp oil it, but I'm also not 100% sure. I might stain it, might. But I kind of just want to get the drawers done and these panels done, and then I'll make that decision as to what to do next. So we'll start on the drawers today, and then, well, actually, we're going to do all of it today, but we're going to start on the drawers first, and then we'll move over to those fiddly panels because I'm not looking forward to those. So we're using the five mil nap rollers and these just wash out in water. So we're reusing one the last time. Oh, it painted blue belt, I think. I loaned this to one of our lovely locals to have a go with um, and it was used with blue. That's why it's blue. But they do wash out really, really well. Just hot soapy water as normal. So. Our drawer fronts are uh, the original red. They have been cleaned. They had four holes in each. The handles at some point, it looks like you can sort of, you can't see the indent as well now after I've sanded them, but you could see they had some really, really beautiful handles on them. Unfortunately, those handles are long gone and they had some 70s handles. They're really, really ugly to be honest. Um, 70 angle, uh, handles on an angle, they look horrible, so they've all come off. I'm going to find new handles for it. Now, because it's such a big, chunky piece, I just need to find the right handle. I'm kind of thinking copper, but I'm not sure. It'll either be copper or I'll stick with black, and black on black I think always looks quite nice as well. So, I'll, this is work in progress, this piece, because I don't really know what I'm doing. So. The drawers I've filled, I've sanded, I've cleaned really well, they're ready to paint. Now because we're using chalk finish, we are not going to prime this piece. Chalk finish pretty much sticks to most surfaces. These drawers have heaps of texture in them. They have been scruff sanded quite well and because I've had to do extra sanding to then clean up all the putty that I've used to fill the holes, they're ready to go. I can paint straight over. Now if I was using silk finish, I tend to err on the side of caution with silk finish and it is highly recommended as well to use a primer, a Pure Eco's base and blocker in particular, but any primer that you've got, water-based primer, underneath silk finish. It is up to you. I know there's a couple, a couple of my regulars, they don't use the primer, others do. It's up to you, but it is highly recommended. I'm not using a primer today because we're using chalk finish. So I've got my roller, I've got a tray. 
I always have a brush on hand even when I'm rolling. Sometimes, like the draw fronts are all flat, but sometimes a brush just makes it a little bit easier. Um, and it also it makes cleaning up the jar that little bit easier when you're tipping it into your tray. So let me position our camera so you can see what we're doing. I reckon we might bring, oh yes, our shelves are all full again of beautiful pretties. And I will get it all up onto the website as soon as I've done this. I just want to paint. All I've done this week is admin and, excuse the mess over there, um, admin and packing orders and tax stuff for the end of financial year. And I am just, I just want to paint this afternoon. So that's what we're doing. And then I'll jump on the website and put all our products up on there. Now, I didn't open this before. If your jars get stuck and you can't open them, just pop them on the ground, lid, for, lid down, and give them a little gentle tap. And that generally is enough to break the seal. So our carbon is this really, really beautiful black. It is black, black, it is gorgeous. I use carbon a lot. I don't use white, but I do use carbon. I really, really love a good black um, paint. So just a paint tray. You don't have to use a paint tray if you don't have one. Just use a dinner plate, that's fine, or any flat surface. So I'm just gonna tip a little bit in. Now, carbon, we don't use much. I call carbon my uh, one coat wonder. Most of the time, all I need is one coat. Of course, I do two anyway, just to make sure. But carbon's coverage, is excellent and you don't use as much as what you will with other colors. So, I'm gonna start with one drawer. We do have the sides, which, hang on a moment, I just realized I forgot to take. Let me grab my tape and I will show you how I take drawers up as well because I have been asked. All right, for tape, Use whatever you like. Um, at the moment, I have got this frog tape in the yellow. It comes in a few colors. I'm really liking the yellow. And all I do is grab off a piece of tape without sticking it to itself. Ugh. Right, can you guys see that? Kind of. See where, so these are dovetail joins and along the bottom of there, that's where I tape so that you get a nice clean line of paint and then you get the bare drawer. I always, because I'm doing these pieces to sell, I always tape. I think it just looks nicer. And I just line it up so it's straight. So if I lined it up exactly with that bottom join, it wouldn't be 100%. I do just eyeball it. I never measure or anything like that. But I just do that and I like to make sure I wrap around the top and the bottom to make sure we've got a nice clean line. So I do this for all the drawers. When you're purchasing a piece of furniture with drawers, look for this join. This is called the dovetail join. It's a really beautiful join to begin with, but it also, which one's our top, that one? It's also, a good sign of good quality furniture as well. Uh, this will last much longer. The drawer will last much longer like this with the dovetail than just butted up against each other and glued together. So because it locks it in. So always look for good quality pieces. And this piece, it's quite old. Um, it's probably 50s or 60s, I would say, at a guess. It's nice and solid, that's for sure. It's nice and chunky, it's all solid timber. So I always look for really good quality pieces. I buy most of my pieces on buy, swap, sell. I like to take all my drawers in one go because otherwise I always forget one. Um, so I'm quickly gonna do this. Um, I buy most of my pieces on marketplace, buy, swap, sell. I also go to a few auctions. I love a good auction. We've got a really great lo local auction house here. Um, just don't all of you come and start buying things because then I won't get anything. 
Um, <laughs> but auction houses, they are, I don't think they're necessarily dying off, but they're not as popular, I suppose, as what they used to be, and there's not as many of them. But when you find a good one, it's definitely worth, that's not big enough for that drawer, is it? you over there. I'm going to put my tape. I forgot these drawers are bigger. Now, I'm just going to stand up and put this one together. Um, auction houses are really good. Marketplace. Always make sure that you inspect a piece inside and out. You don't want to be bringing home any bugs. Um, lots of little holes in a piece that don't look like they're man-made. Walk away from it. It's not worth bringing those bugs into your home. Um, and if you're not up for doing any extensive repair, also make sure that the piece is in good repair as well. A drawer falling apart is generally a pretty easy fix, just some glue. But if it's structurally damaged it's, uh, and you're not comfortable or confident in fixing it, walk away. So I tend to take on pieces that nobody else wants that are beyond that nice, quick, easy, basic fixing. I'm going to use that panky piece out right there. One more. But know when a piece isn't worth it as well. Um, I don't have a big stash of pieces anymore. I used to collect every single piece that I saw um, and that I saw at a good price. I used to get all of it because it was worth getting all of them um, back when I first started. But now I have a very small stash. I never have more than about 10 pieces at a time. One, so that I don't get overwhelmed. And two, so that... I'm not just hoarding pieces so that I sort of can get through them and that, I, and that way too I know they're really good quality pieces and if I bring new pieces in like this weekend or last weekend rather there was another auction I brought a couple of really beautiful pieces in so I've gone through my little stash which isn't very big and I've cleared out a couple of pieces that have been hanging around a little bit too long I'm really not feeling them. I'm not feeling inspired by them. I just don't want to do them. So I've cleared them out. So I like to bring in and get rid of pieces regularly. I also like to make sure that I'm working on pieces that I enjoy. That's really, really important to me. My time is quite limited. So it's really important that do this over here where you can see that I work on pieces that I'm actually enjoying. If I'm not feeling it, I don't want to do it. So that's just something to keep in mind as well. All right, so loading up your roller. I do like paint trays for this, but again, a plate works just fine. And all you're doing is getting a really nice, even coat of paint on your roller and then these are nice and flat there's nothing fancy about them same as painting a wall one end to the next I do like to sort of do a little wiggle at the end that way my roller is not just going flying off either and putting paint everywhere it shouldn't be but just like that see how fast this is and this is why we tape as well, because now I can just very gently run my roller along those sides and ends. There we go, down this end. And down this one. If you've got questions, please let me know guys. I'm always happy to help about anything, even if it's not specifically about this. I'm here anyway, ask away. All right, there's one done. This is why I like rolling, because even painting that by hand, it probably would have taken me an extra minute. So it is a bit of a time saver. So you just want to make sure it's loaded up enough that you can go down in one nice long brush and it doesn't look like it's jumping its way along. 
thank you all for watching. So I'll make sure this goes up on YouTube as well. We've got a YouTube channel, just search The Painted Brush & Co. All of our videos go up on there and I do put our lives up there as well. Facebook now makes it quite difficult for you guys to find our videos on our Facebook page sometimes. It likes to hide them. So I pop them up there as well. So it's nice and easy for you all. On our website as well, it also makes it easier because then we can link everything to our website to the relevant products that you can see what's going on. All right, there's two. Nice and simple. Let's do these ones. I do like pieces like this. I like doing a really fun, interesting pieces with heaps of detail and texture and techniques, but there's just something so calming about these and just, I feel like it's a bit of a palette refresh. You know, when you have like a drink of water, a drink of water between different drinks or between different dishes at a restaurant, it's just a bit of a palette cleanser and that's what these pieces are for me. They're a nice little reset. I've done a few really heavily decorated ones the last little while. So this is just sort of refreshing me and it's giving me a little break as well. I'm about to do a piece in macadamia, which is virtually a white, which I'm really excited, I'm actually really excited about. But I know, even though I'm gonna love it because I'm excited about it, I know it's, it's like, do I really have to paint white? But I do, that piece needs to be white. But, so I like to do a bit of carbon in between as well. Carbon's my go-to color sometimes. Along the top. Now these paints are all water-based, so Purico are, are, are blah blah, are an Australian brand. All of the paints are water-based, they're all eco-friendly, they will come off your skin, they will come out of clothes to an extent, but the actual pigments in them can stain your clothes. That's why when I'm in the shop and wearing my nice clothes, my work clothes, <laughs> I do wear an apron. The rest of the time I don't care. But when I'm in here, it's generally just a better idea because then otherwise I guarantee I will get paint all over me. Alright, last one. And then we'll do these panels. And I'll show you how I do those. So again, loading up my roller. And once you've got it nice and loaded. And this is sort of what you want to see. You don't want so much paint on your brawler that's just going everywhere. But you want enough that you can just nicely go from one end to the other. And then rolling generally lays the paint down a little bit thinner as well, which means it also dries faster. So if I wait maybe 15, 20 minutes, and I've still got stuff to do, so that works for me today. I can actually get the second coat done on these today. And then I'll probably go home. But then tomorrow it means I can seal them. So I'll either seal with a wax or I will seal with one of Pure Eco sealers. I'm thinking a wax. Or actually, maybe I'll do hemp oil. I don't know if I've shown you all hemp oil over chalk paint before. Maybe we'll do that, actually. Right, that's what we're doing. We're doing hemp oil because I'm going to do hemp oil definitely on the table one way or another. Even if I stain it, I will hemp oil it. So maybe, yes, we will. We'll do hemp oil on this, on the drawers as well because hemp oil on the chalk finish is really, really beautiful. Let me move those out of the road. Whoops, without getting more paint on it. Alright, let's move you over here to this one. Okay, 
So I always paint before I do any kind of timber finishing. The reason I do that is paint is way easier to get off raw timber than what it is to get it off timber finishing. It also means that if I do get paint onto the timber finish, onto the timber, I don't have to worry about ruining that finishing or have to sand it back and do it again. So I always paint first. Plus, chalk paint is a very, very easy to sand off. And because it's water-based, it's even easier. So all we're gonna do with this is we've got a little bit of, I'm just trying not to drop anything. We've got this little lip along here. So I'm going to use my brush. I'm gonna cut in, I'm gonna get up it there in those corners and along that bit there. Now we are using a 38 millimeter brush. The, the, I've got these in the oval. I'm using a square today because it's what I've already got open and what I'm already using. I'm a big fan of using what I've got first. I don't like to, I suppose, waste money and waste products when I don't need to. So I'm just gonna get it up in there. I've got a decent amount of paint on my brush. I'm just gonna run it all the way along that edge and come back the other way. Now this bottom lip's actually on a little bit of a slope, which is a little bit strange, but that's fine. I'll go along there, down here into this corner as well. And as I said, it doesn't matter if I get it on the timber because I can get it straight back off once it's dry. So I'll let the paint dry and then I'll do that. Again, down this side. And getting nice clean lines as well, like what I have down the side, it's purely practice. So don't worry if you can't get that clean line straight away. It just comes down to taking your time and practicing. And a lot of this is just practice. Rolling obviously is pretty simple. But most of the time, getting the really nice finishes, it really is just practice and making sure that you're using really good quality supplies and brushes. So paint and brushes rather. So I'm just getting all those little nooks and crannies. Oops, that's a bit much. And again, down this end. So I'll do this on both ends. I'm doing it anyway, so I might as well show you both. Again, it doesn't matter down the bottom here, I'm gonna clean that up afterwards. And this is why oops, I don't finish that first because it's just easier if I don't. All right, now we're gonna load up our roller again. There's not a lot of paint left in here, but we'll see how we go. And this is why we cut in as well, so we can get those nice clean lines. And it just makes it that little bit easier than trying to jam a roller into an area that it really just can't fit. And I find rollers in sections like this that little bit easier as well. Now, let's see if we've got enough on this roller in this pan to get this other side. It's just a little bit excess on the end there. And I like these rollers because I don't end up with lines in my paint either. I don't get those, I think they call them nap lines. I'm not sure, but those lines that you get sometimes when you use rollers that aren't that great. I do like that I don't get any awkward lines. And once that dries and settles, our drawer, one of our drawers, our first drawer is almost dry, so I'll show you that in a minute. So you can see how beautiful it is. So I, I'm already really liking that contrast. I think that's really beautiful. So let's do the other end. And then we're done for today. Oh, I might show you my other two little projects in here, but we are done for today's live, which is fun. Thank you for joining me. All right. Slide you on there. A really good quality furniture dolly 
is an absolute lifesaver. Don't cheap out and go for the cheap ones, they fall apart. The really good ones with the rubber top, I'm telling you now, are absolutely amazing. I can't even remember where we got this one from, but it is such a time saver and it makes moving big pieces like this by myself much, much easier because most of the time it is just me in here. My husband does come in and help me move things. He brought this piece in for me, but most of the time it's just me. So being able to get on and do things like this by myself when I can is really important. Uh, do I stock IOD? No, I don't have IOD. I have got um, redesigned with primer. If you're after IOD specifically, I recommend LJ at uh, paint, uh, hang on, paintbrush and pixie dust. I'm pretty sure she's called. If LJ is watching, sometimes she does, she'll let you know. Um, but I highly recommend LJ anyway. All right. I'm just going to pop a little bit more paint into my tray. I don't need much. Uh, I prefer you on there. So again, we're going to cut in. Now, all of your orders from the weekend, from our sale, they've all gone out but two. I'm waiting for stock that's arriving tonight. Uh, we've run out of a couple of things apparently, mate. Off tape was wrong, so both of you have been notified if you're still waiting for your tracking. For everyone else, your orders have gone out. We've still got a couple of local orders here as well. Um, you should have received notification to come grab them when you're ready. But thank you so much, everyone, for your amazing orders and all of your support. This is the first time I've had a chance to go live since then, so. Thank you, I really appreciate it. Oh no, hang on, I was live last weekend, wasn't I? What were we doing? Oh, we are packing orders last weekend, so I have been live. <laughs> I'm very forgetful. All right, there's one panel. Let's do the other one, oops. Without putting paint absolutely everywhere. So again, I'm just cutting it in, getting it into those corners. There's nothing worse, and it's a pet peeve of mine, is seeing a corner not painted. Absolutely drives me nuts realizing that I've missed a corner. There we go. Now, if you're local uh, and you want to come along and learn how to paint furniture in person, I do run workshops. We have one tomorrow, and I have one space left. So, if you're watching this and you message me straight away, you're more than welcome to come. It's two till five tomorrow. It's getting a bit messy down the bottom here, but that's all right. We can clean that up. It's a bit easier, actually, the other end. Up on that little bit more of a slope. All right, so again, loading our rollers. We don't need loads and loads and loads of paint on our roller. Again, we don't want it flying everywhere. If you've got paint flying everywhere when you're rolling, you've got too much paint on your rollers. All right. Straight up and down, side to side, whatever direction you like really. It honestly doesn't matter, but up and down obviously makes the most sense, so try and stick with the easiest option if you can. And it's the same concept of brushing as well. Once you've got it laid down, don't keep touching it. Let that paint dry because the paint's a lot thinner as well. It will dry a lot faster, and you'll see that in a second when I show you one of our drawers. It will dry significantly faster. So you wanna make sure that you're not touching your paint any more than necessary. There we go. Done! How easy is that? Right, let's have a look. Let's come over here, back this way, hello. No worries at all. Okay, here's our very first draw. So it's almost dry. It's, it is touch dry. So here's our first draw. You can see the shiny patches are where it's not quite 100% dry. So chalk finish dries really, really matte. Um, and then you seal it. So you can seal it with our top coats, which I can actually show you, or you seal it with a wax, or you seal it with our hemp finishing oil. 
it is up to you which one you would prefer to use. Um, oh, I completely missed this. <laughs> I'm doing well, aren't I? I knew I'd miss somewhere. Um, it's really up to you which finish you choose for chalk, to go over the chalk finish. Um, if you're doing really high use pieces, then I definitely recommend the top coats. In saying that though, hemp finishing oil is extremely durable. It goes through a natural curing process uh, where it hardens. And I've got hemp finishing oil on chalk paint on a sideboard in my house on a big hutch. It has been very heavily used for the last, I think it's about four years old now. It's a, it's a good, is it four years? It must be almost four years because I did it before the pandemic. Yeah, so it must be four years old. Um, very heavily used. We are not gentle with our furniture in our house at all. Uh, two kids, two dogs. There was a cat at the time. Actually, there was another dog at the time as well. It was chaos. And we're not gentle with our furniture at all. And hemp finishing oil is excellent. We've also got it on our dining table. Really, really durable product. So I do highly recommend it for a natural finish. But if you want to use a sealer, uh, the Pure Eco sealers are fantastic. They're water-based. I don't have any issues. Uh, this was the question that I received the other day. I don't have any issue issues getting... Um, white streaks, particularly over dark colours. The only time that can occur is if you're using the matte sealer. And that can happen with any matte sealer that's the mattifying agent in the product. Um, going a little bit streaky and a little bit white. Uh, can be counteracted by simply mixing some of your black paint with your top coat. So, anyway, that little spiel. This is our drawer. We're nice and dry. You can see how great that coverage is. It's really, really good. So it's actually dry enough that I can put a second coat on it right now. So let's do one more coat just on this one drawer because the others are all still a little bit wet and I've got just enough paint left. So we're just going to, you can't see anything if I do it down there, can you? So again, straight up and down, second coat. When I'm rolling, I always do two coats. If I was to brush this, the paint would be a lot thicker and honestly, a second coat wouldn't necessarily be there even needed. I generally do it anyway, just for my own peace of mind. But making sure that I get all of those edges this time, since I missed one last time. And you can see how fast the paint dries and it gives you such a beautiful finish. So that's it from me today. I hope that you've learned something. If you've got any questions about anything at all, please don't hesitate to ask. I'm always happy to help. Um, so I'll try and do a live with hemp oil. Otherwise, I will definitely video it regardless and I will post it at some point. I actually prefer lives because I can get up and out to you guys as fast as possible, whereas videoing can take a while. Um, but that's it from me. So we've used Pure Eco Chalk Finish Carbon, which is the black, with a two fussy bloke roller and with a 38 mil paintbrush today. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have got questions at any point at all, please don't hesitate, I'm always happy to help. We're at 37 High Street, Eagle Hawk, or you can find us online at thepainterbrush.com.au. Bye everyone.